Mr. Lai. Good morning, and welcome to the Public Library's 2024-2028 Capital Improvement Plan and Public Hearing. Um, at the CPC from their experience like this, with all departments and agencies that submit their uh, capital funding over the 25 years, um, in order to give the uh, public, um, I guess, give the request more public visibility, hear what the uh, agencies are proposing, you know, upgrades to facilities, uh, to ultimately improve operations, and so forth. So we like to hold these hearings to give more information to the public while this uh, budget process is, is moving forward. Um, so what I ask all the agents and departments to do, agencies and departments, is to go through each of your requests and give a brief description of what you're requesting, the need for uh, this improvement, renovation, whatever it may be, and how this fits within you know, your overall vision for your facility improvement. Start with John Brooks Jackson, John Ray Massey, the Deputy Director of City Planning. Uh, Jim Smith, Director of Capital Projects. Rachel Berg, Planning Administrator, City Planning Commission. I'm Shanna Sakai, I'm the Executive Director of Forensic and Analysis Public Library. And I'm Clayton Moon, Executive Director of Analysis Public Library. I'm a Michael Scott, Capital Projects Project Manager. I'm Sarah Fox, and I'm the APA Capital Projects Manager. I'm Catherine Cover, I come from the Curve on Alice Library. Great. Sarah Sanders. Um, so our first line is the city archives, which I believe a feasibility study was done in 2014. Um, currently, the archives, we have two basements in the main library, and the majority of our collection is actually in one of the two basements. Luckily, it didn't flood during Katrina, but um, it's never a good idea to have archives, especially the full history of your city in a basement. So we're And we're also always wanting to um, make it more accessible to the public, have a legitimate reading room, have more space to make it um, how a city archive should be. So that's our first one. Um, and then the second one, I just wanted to say, um, I have a talk about it, but while all the items we've listed in our capital projects requests are important, we're here today to express that our most immediate need is to replace the major components of the main library HVAC system and the three main library elevators. They are included in this next one. Um, the main library capital projects requests, but these items cannot wait. This is a crisis. The city has repeatedly called upon the New Orleans Public Library to serve as a cooling center for our city's most vulnerable residents during this unprecedented heat wave. Yet we've been struggling to keep the doors of our main library open to fulfill that role. We are very committed to continuing to serve as a cooling station, but with, without reliable HVAC, this will not be an option. According to the recent feasibility study for the main library, is on number two. Um, okay. <clears throat> the majority of our HVAC system is at or very close to the end of its life expectancy, if not far past it. Our head engineer and the feasibility study tell us that our two cooling towers are close to 30 years old and are near end of life and are working with reduced efficiency due to the number of age-related issues. Our two chillers are in a similar state. They are both almost at end of life and due to their age, we struggle every day to get them to even turn on. We have been forced to operate with only one chiller a lot of this summer because the starter parts are so dated or obsolete that finding replacement parts has been nearly impossible. There is nothing worse in this brutally hot summer than having to tell our teens they can't count on the library as a cool and comfortable refuge and a place of learning and discovery. Instead, they are forced to pack up and leave or can't even come in the door. This exact situation happened numerous times this summer. We've had to close the main library for at least 10 days so far this year. Since July 10th, we've had to keep our public computers turned off at the main library due to excessive heat in that part of the building. And our teen tech center has opened late, closed early, or remained closed repeatedly since June. In July, we began officially tracking it, and the teen tech center was forced to close for about half of its normal operating hours due to excessive heat. Currently, we do not have a public elevator at the main library which means that this one very fragile, barely limping along freight elevator is required to take patrons to the second floor. It's the only elevator that actually goes to the second floor um, where our children's and teen departments are housed. Even with that option, library patrons are required to walk to the far back corner of the library 
to enter what is normally a secured staff area to access this light elevator. The, if either elevator or HVAC systems were to fail to operate properly, the library and city could be liable for any harm caused by this. The board, which we have some members here, um, supports spending a significant amount of our reserves to address these critical problems, but we also need to maintain a six-month operating rainy day fund in our reserves. We need the support of capital projects to fully fund these priorities, not just for the library, but for the city. Um, thank you for your time and consideration of this specific request. And so the rest of number two is all the other things, includes everything else, including water, um, our the entire HVAC system, the elevators, um, ceiling improvements, lighting, we and electricity, I think, too. Michelle, maybe I'll get that here. Um, basically, the main library needs an overhaul. And then the fourth one is Alvar Library. It has um, started to take on water. We're not sure. There's been some new architecture, new buildings behind it. And since then, water is coming into the back door. And we've had termite damage because of that. Also, the lighting is now, you know, it was originally built to be a building that was mostly high windows, big high windows that were lit from the outside. And with this new big condo or apartment building, it is having, it's very dark in there. Um, it wraps around the yes. side. It makes an L around this massive building, makes an L around the entire structure. Yeah. It's very dark. Um, and a, but yet a very popular and well loved library in that part of town. Um, and then Keller, it needs an extension. It's probably our lowest priority at this point. We definitely need more staff space. It actually has no workspace for the staff. Um, it has one little cubicle for the direct for the boss manager. Oh my God, is that person called? Um, but no actual workspace, no break room. So um, it is not working very well for the staff. Or honestly. Anything else I left off? So, um, <clears throat> got a few questions. Just starting with the archive, um, the feasibility study that was done two years ago. Um, just, you know, I, I believe if I remember correctly, it presented two options. One was to be considered moving to Santa Fe, which I think was probably off the table. It was never really yeah. preferred. Um, but the second was to build above. Well, that's still the preferred option, and um, have the project totals been uh, made current? No, I don't, I don't believe so. I don't think anything's really been, there's been some attempts to figure out other options for it repeatedly mm -hmm. since, and I you know, haven't really been engaged in that very long because I've only been the director officially for the last year. Um, but I have been at the library for almost eight years, so I am hearing about it. But. Um, I think the goal would be, in my mind, to keep them in the library, like to be part of redoing all of the library because we are downtown, which I think is important. Though I would like some parking because I know that's especially an issue for archival visitors because they're often elderly or, you know, so it's hard to access our building for them, especially with elderly. Um, the main thing is it has to be load bearing. Um, and we definitely have to have the archives on site with the service So the plan, so this is based on building another, uh, an addition on the part of just the parking lot. Yeah. Parking, every time we talk about the parking lot, yeah, it gets mired in conversation about the city doesn't own the whole parking lot. And, and that a fair, maybe a third-ish of the parking lot is owned by Tulane. So it yeah. gets discussed, but then it gets dismissed as not very practical. Um, what it would take to acquire that land or build high or, you know, hold off. Um, I don't think incorporating parking into a new structure is all that complicated. You know, both raised and, and some that might be in a new building. But the issue is the city doesn't own the land. Right. So what is this, as I'm looking at these numbers, what, what, are, what are the assumptions that this, these numbers my understanding is they're from that feasibility study in 2000. But they mean in terms of oh. site, what, you know, this, does this budget assume that you're building on the 
parking lot, does it assume we're building someplace else? What are the assumptions in that regard? I think it's very set right in removing everything from the basement to another system. So you're renovating the existing space and the existing footprint. That's right. And the main footprint, but not the basement. Right, right, I understand. There's a bunch of things that have been discussed, and my understanding is that that study didn't necessarily take it into these areas of building up, building in the underground space that's on the corner of... Yeah, Cravier. And Loyola, and they look at the... It's not that narrow band. It hasn't been brought that far. There was a whole study done, and there's not a consultant involved in citing it. So it's square footage numbers that you keep getting built on every year. My understanding is the number has been showing up for years, and it's just we've added a foundation. Okay, so you have these numbers. They're adjusted based on those projects. Yeah, it used to be at 20. Now it's at 30. How long would it be reasonable for us to move this conversation into the new city hall? We've talked about that, actually. And if that becomes a go, we've talked about the fact of how ideally sited that is and how many other cities combine more than an office building into a governmental center. And depending on the size of the city, amenities like a library are included, or sometimes public safety, some kind of small city, their police, and fire. I don't think that's practical for here, but with regard to library and for just office, we've discussed that. What's the square footage requirement? It was calculated in a number of different ways, whether it's open, whether it's closed staff, well, they're all closed staff, but whether it's high density. They also grow every year, which is something we have to always take into mind. Every time an office, which one of the reasons why they would make sense close to or with city hall is because a lot of where they're getting, obviously, their collection is from city hall. But it does just keep growing. And stuff we absolutely want to keep has to keep, but it keeps growing. So we have to put that into consideration as well. I'm assuming they did when they did that feasibility study. Well, look, you don't have any money program in the request for next year. So I suggest that you guys put your heads together. Maybe we need to suggest a project update the study. And that will include, you know, maybe we can look at the possibility of putting the art house in city hall. It's been a part of discussion. And as city hall has changed target. Yeah. So do that. You know, just put a number in for updating the study and stuff like that. You know, to include these considerations. Including the new city hall. And then a couple of years ago, there's some recommended bond funding for the art gallery. It's been in the budget. Part of the conditions for the staff to stay in place. Was that part of the reallocation? Yeah, it was written. You know, once again, everybody. Everybody's been stabbed. So we are in design. The funds for construction. They're frozen. They're not expected to be in that bill anyway. But we are bringing more people there. How much do we need? Give or take. And once again, the intent is to remove money and then put it back. 
So, but still, if we had two million, and, and I guess maybe that's a good segue into that. You may not know, does the twenty-four million represent uh, if we were looking at you know upgrading the HVAC system? Is that this number? So there is a um, an ongoing feasibility study, and it dovetails into this project, right? Starting to foretell mm -hmm. the legitimacy of this number of perennial format. And it's not completed yet. Um, we are um, close, but the number is, is significant based on the building is a 70 year old building with um, a lot of a lot of issues. What's the 234,000? Because that this isn't a project yet, right? You right. know, that's why it's here, right? Um, but this isn't a project. We've got the feasibility study that's funded through uh, what would equate to a schematic design phase. Okay. So okay. enough to get pricing going. So the elevators and HVAC, the major components that we're especially know don't work based on the feasibility study and what our engineers have said they're having to deal with every day. Um, what was our estimate for that? Was it, I feel like just those pieces of that. I think they're preliminary and I don't think, I think they really should be discussed. Okay. I mean, yeah. unless you disagree, it's very preliminary. Right. Okay. But I think the document that Michelle just talked about, that can go to the board. Mm -hmm. And let me explain why I say that. The way they touted it up, it's if all alternates are accepted. Right, right. And so the bottom line is triple this. But I'm not fully convinced that some of those alternates don't have overlap. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why um, I, I need that table. <laughs> yeah, so when I was like, sort of looking at that document, it seemed like it was like you could upgrade your HVAC in these four or five different there ways, ways or some combination of these four or five yeah. different ways and um, so it's not a complete vision mm -hmm. right and there wasn't necessarily a recommendation of this is what we should be doing to make our building a space that can be used mm -hmm. by the public on a day of any temperature uh, well into the, the future and that's kind of what we're, we're wanting to do as um, part of the city's first response team we're working towards a meeting uh, for early to mid next week to review that with some folks that want to get some clarity. Mm -hmm. And you know, Ellen, you and I were comped and I want to give Robert and you know, each of the clubs um, share in the power in this building. So we kind of got something that's going to be comped. You know, I don't know if that's what we're going to do. It's just to bring Robert to the meeting on progress. Surprisingly, I still say it's over, over three. When you start looking at the two full basement levels and the three above, it's um, much larger than meets the eye. Yeah. Um, right. Every time you look at the number, it's surprising. Okay. Um, in your uh, statement, you mentioned all the different types of service and rest. Conditions that they may operate. Um, if you could, after this meeting, either send me your statement or just a list of those types of interrupts. Would you like the report on those issues? I know there's a way to try to plan dinner. Uh, sometimes we uh, go on site visits. We've gone to the library a few times for the project just to you know, look around and make sure to document uh, some of the issues that can work up. Could the board, you know, we know I know you're getting two million dollars back. Could the board front the money for the design of the HVAC system with the knowledge that we, this money is coming back unless it comes back and you can, you know, account adjustment or something to uh, replenish that fund? 
Yeah, I mean, we're in uh, you know, budget planning for 2024, and the board has discussed contributing part of our fund balance to, to this project, which would include the design. Um, but we don't have enough in our fund balance to fully fund this, and I think even with the $2 million that you said is coming back, we would still need additional funding. So I'm just talking about the $230,000. Yeah, that, that is something that like we could right. we could fund through our reserves, but we want to make sure that there's like a long term plan to fund this whole project, so we're not just out you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars and then it ends up being a non starter because it's not we don't have the long term plan. So we want to keep that long game in mind. We want to keep our doors open and we want to be serving in a way the city has called on upon us to be serving. And once again, strategically. Yeah, and we understand that. We want we want to be like moving it along on our end as far as we can, but we know looking at our fund balance and the other you know priorities to be operating are many other branches that we can't do this alone. And so that's kind of where we want to um, kind of understand what that collaborative process looks like and how to make sure that. Okay, I mean, that would be my suggestion given you know you are you know you're stepping up and you're putting skin. So look, just one more comment. I'm, I'm looking at this number for the main library, the 234. If it's a $24 million project, I'm not paying any money on it. So we need to cover the meeting of the, which is the elevator to Apex Six and Four. Just right. once again, just go back and revisit. Uh, no, I think um, the numbers we're talking about is probably close enough. Um, I think one last question for me. Uh, you mentioned in your statement that priority number one should be the main library. Is, is that the way it should be ordered on? Yes. Um, we kind of didn't realize that until after the feasibility study and talking with the board. I mean, we realized it was a priority, but it, we kept the archives because we've been on there forever and we never want to lose sight of that. But not being able to keep our building air conditioned isn't good for the archives. Yeah, yeah. And not having a proper elevator to the archives is, isn't good. So it does sort of okay. come back around. So is that pool two and three up, or just two above the archives? Just two. Just two. Yeah. Okay. Sure. 
Okay, so let's go. Other questions? So we just kind of said, like, what happens now? So, so what happens now? Yeah, um, so this is actually, I think, the last day of these hearings, uh, the department hearings. Um, from there, uh, team planning will work towards developing the plan, something that we really care about. Projects towards the administration to put together proposals uh, for you know if any funding capital funding is available for um, for the entire city. You just have to see what each organization would like and how many would be enough. Yeah. So, but uh, while we develop the um, the document, I mentioned before that we often come out to sites or just kind of put eyes on on the organization. Uh, so this might be a good time to revisit. Just so Taylor will know that this is part of the whole process that mm -hmm. it hasn't been shared mm -hmm. with you. So you might want to. Is that on the website for, for, for public to get to? I don't know. I know that we distributed it to the agencies, so mm -hmm. um, I can't speak to what site or not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. And then the, the proposal that you came up with is it for 2024 or is it 2024 to 2028 and then you're kind of amending 2024 based on like what you might have had? Yeah, so the, the plan is meant to be um, kind of provide guidance for the next year of capital budget for 2024. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, that's what will be acted on September 1st. Uh, but, you know, it's a five year snapshot, I guess, from the company's perspective. All the need to have a kind of plan out starting. And the council does uh, adopt recommendations for the remaining three years by resolution, you know, recognizing the state priorities. Um, but the plan itself um, will be released on September 5th uh, to the public, and it will be presented to the City Planning Commission September 12th. Um, from there, once the commission adopts the plan, Question is with that with you know with funding the library, we usually support the federal program for the yeah. library. But then when it gets here, we have five billion dollars in the books to spend. Yeah. We have to build a major master plan, and then we share this with you guys, and then it's like this library and right here. So we say definitely um, you know kind of just vision have an entire floor that cannot be accessed just because of the fees. So what we're trying to find out is once this is approved by the mayor, how do we track? What is on what is the next step to be done? Because that is the question. We've done some past projects that the public seems to feel have been honored, but nothing has been reached. So how do we track as members of the public what is in line to be done? How is how is that information released? Um, well, let, let me the couple of things would be different this year. We have met with the council. Uh, one orient we gave them an orientation session for their capital budgeting process uh, with the goal to try to do this actually earlier so that it's a more correct process. Um, once we finish with all of the department hearings, we're going to take all of the submissions and we are going to give them to the council which is that we you know we, we haven't done it this early. So we want to try to get them more involved in the process. They're more informed and educated uh, because we've got approximately 170 submissions at a value of $2.2 billion. So we've got $2.2 billion worth of grants. So you guys are competing against everybody else. And you know, once again, it goes back to the strategic, you know, you put a skin in the game if you've got plans at hand, you know, that mm -hmm. sets you apart from somebody that doesn't have plans or somebody that has plans and say, hey, we put money in. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's we, you know, we encourage departments to be as strategic as possible because they're submitting the budgets. Uh, we're going to get this to council sooner so that they've got more of an opportunity to look at the projects. Um, we're encouraging. 
encouraging and I've had conversations with the council, you know, previous councils on uh, during the operating budget here. You know, council's gonna have budget decisions as well. So we're encouraging the council uh, to when they have the operating hearings with each department to take that opportunity to pull over the department's capital request and have conversations with you guys as well, because no guy can carry you. So, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to get, and it is a collaborative effort. You know, of course, we're getting the information, so we've got to, you know, we provide input. Then it goes to the mayor, and the mayor and her team looks at it, establishes their priorities. Then the council gets it, then they establish their priorities, you know, to help all the, the, accept the public meeting opportunities uh, for the public to uh, see the plan as well and provide their input. So you've got all these things that have to be, you know, worked out. Um, so that's kind of the, yeah. in a nutshell. Um, but once again, several marketing points, we're planning in terms of public hearings. Uh, council's going to have a public hearing. Um, so, you know, we just want to make sure that all of these requests, requests are met. Um, you know, we want to make sure that uh, everybody is as aware Several things in bubbling up, and the issues with the DOT seeing it citywide. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, we're, we're in a season, a record setting heat season, so that you know, will it will it be more shining light than it has ever had? And so things are bubbling up that we can, you know, help people to look at, uh, you know, as, as we're all trying to make the collective decisions. Um, so, but in terms of tracking, for approval yeah. with the head election, we published the capital program findings and what's happening with those. Mm -hmm. Do we not? You see it a 90 day look ahead, a 180 day look ahead. Are we still publishing those? Well, we've I been sending out, like and you know, I haven't been as consistent, but we have started resending the monthly reports mm -hmm. to you guys so that you can see where your projects are. Um, I've got to really get our website back up and running again so that that kind of information is available. But once again, we have been sending out the uh, monthly reports, and you can look at those and see, you know, how the projects are advancing and what the various issues are that are associated with a particular project that's concerned with the portfolio that you funded, and that would be. So, yes.
this chapter is going to be such a chapter. Does that make sense? It does. And I just have to have a Those days, they are over 120 flights per second. 107. I'm sorry. 107. <laughs> 107. So my question is, who makes, who makes the decision on who's going to be funded mm -hmm. or not? Or no, it's once again it's a collaboration between the mayor's office okay. and the county. They are the ultimate deciders. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to make it a clarification that we help inform. We don't. Right. We don't. Yeah. You're not. We manage the program once the approval came. Our mayor. Well, that's good to know. That's what I want to know. Who the, who the lobby? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you want to know who's talking. To. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I was saying, you know. Um, when the council has their operating budget hearings, that is, you know, everybody has to go before the council to present their operating budget. That's a great opportunity to once again to talk about the capital budget. Mm -hmm. And though that's the opportunity for you guys as an organization to get to officially go before the council and tell them, present your projects. Particularly if your operation budget as it has been in these last number of years keeps taking hits for cap what might be considered capital oh, expenses, yeah, right. yeah. the two can't be so separate. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing from you, like, plans and anything, and coming on with, like, more concrete plans for for this project will help our case. Yeah. Um, and also sharing this with the folks who are making the decision. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. But while we're carrying our water in front of you, I do want to highlight because of the number of like HVAC requests that you probably heard, you're probably like, yeah, familiar story. Um, I do just want to emphasize again that like the city has been advertising us as a cooling center for the city, and that is a unique position that we are we've been asked to serve in this capacity, and we cannot do that the way it is. Um, and, you know, Emily mentioned the number of days that we've been closed mm -hmm. and. There's like a temperature threshold past which we're like, okay, we're gonna close our doors, and it's like 82 degrees. So that's pretty warm, mm -hmm. and there's probably many days when the doors are open at the cooling center where it's not that cool in the building, mm -hmm. um, but they're continuing to operate and turning off computers or, or doing whatever yeah, they need yeah. to do. So I just, I do want to just highlight our unique position mm -hmm. um, in words? serving our yeah. It's so no, no. There's some locations where they can attach one, you know, if they bring it in. They have to switch something. Okay, they've got the transfer. It's not an automatic transfer switch or a standby thing. Okay, and see, once again, that's something else. Mm -hmm. That should be in here. Yeah. Because, you know, really, yeah. that should be in here. In my opinion, that should be incorporated into a feasibility study. Okay. You know, well, and carry the cost there. Mm -hmm. And we, that's, that's a, that's not that complicated to add at yeah. this point in part in at the point we are. There's not a lot of design versus capacity and care in our number. And we have been meeting about that internally. Um, you know, when I came to the library in 2015, I was over Maine. Uh, I was shocked that there was no generator, at least for the main library, because that's our when that power goes out of the main library, the entire internet and phone system for the entire library system yeah. goes out. And we have the city archives, and I will admit my career began in archives, so I have you know strong feelings about it. And it's the history of our city, and if it yeah, that's important. If it's not kept cold, it's, it it's molds. Quick. Yeah, so um, a whole house generator for 150 to 180 square foot building is um, maybe not entirely realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you're mm -hmm. you're going to have to get your hands around. Right, Selection, criti a critical function, yeah. and, and the one yeah. value of the archives being in the basement mm -hmm. is there, it's cool right now, yeah. you know, or it's at least more temperate, yeah. you know, and less humid, and less humid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, it's not, a great, it's not a great trade off. Yeah. But, but IT is um, in the basement too. IT is in the basement. <laughs> so that is those are the spaces yeah. we've been considering yeah. trying to figure out how to do a generator mm -hmm. for because at least it would keep up the rest of the city's IT, you know, computers. You can't have the main library because their power's out, but you can use the internet and phone lines right. throughout the system. Well have okay, have you guys lost power before during an inclement weather 
uh, event and generators were bought in. Yeah, bird strikes. Um, no, okay, so. <laughs> we've not done that yet. No? You okay. Super, yeah. though. Right. With the bird strikes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah the main, but, this part of town seems to leave from power often. So it is, we definitely notice how convenient it is. Um, our, so I think the generator hooks up, hookups are out to your Hubble, Hubble, Nix, and Ladder. Oh. They're sort of odd choices, but those are the places that they can bring a generator if there's an emergency. But that's and those are mostly geared toward game cooling centers or you know doing all racing events or something. That's really interesting. I would have pegged that as the design build alternative. That if there were yeah. four of them, yeah, we that that we might have been an accommodation. Yeah. Yeah. But but that's not not our selection. No. Yeah. yeah. Let's bring yeah. everything else. Yeah. That makes those yeah. five. Well, I, I would think that the, the, the archive is going to yeah. be a critical facility. So, yeah. that's something. This is your opportunity to highlight the archives as um, not a repository. You, you touched on yeah. it, but to make your statement about that you do well about how it can't function as like a warehouse right. away from the outside. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are coming there, obviously, to do research, and um, and not to mention, you know, our archivists are constantly, we have, you know, collections since 1700, so most of them have not been organized, um, and so our archivists actually have to work down there, and then also be able to serve the public on the third floor, on the third floor. so they go down there and try to continue to organize these things so that they are accessible to the public, because until they have been touched and put in some order, they're not accessible to the public. Um, and the archives, I would say, historically have been a little bit um, staff-wise neglected, and possibly, you know, they're in the basement, so otherwise probably neglected. Um, and, you know, customers come in, or patrons come in to review those archives, so they have to be retrieved and brought up to them. So they're definitely not a storage situation. And archival materials are selected out of all these other things that go to something like Iron Mountain or, you know, that you're just storing them to get rid of once they've met their retention schedule. But archives are those things that we're going to keep forever and preserve in a good, safe way um, and then be accessible to the public. So, I don't know if that was yeah, how well just, I said Yeah, just that <laughs> I think sometimes we think about archives as this repository and some place somebody can go to just retrieve things on demand, and that it's much the way you all have described it to me, and the study probably hopefully highlights is that it's a working mm -hmm. location. It's not just retrieving, but you guys are constantly cataloging and um, scanning things, and and now uh, probably assigning you know metadata to things mm -hmm. in order for it to be retrievable. Which I would think the operations is even heightened. Yeah, that. definitely. We have hired a digital archivist who is helping us. I mean, we all of our archivists are pretty digital oriented, but mm -hmm. this guy's like specialty is that so that because you know people access our materials, we actually have international visitors coming mm -hmm. to this archive. But also, the more we can put online, the less strain it is on staff. But also, the more other people can get the information, enjoy it. But also, you know, heavy research is coming out of this. You know, really old city. I don't know if it <laughs> yeah, I always, whenever we onboard new employees, always take them to the archives just to familiarize them with the whole routine of that. We love those new employees. Yeah, I appreciate that because there are some departments, and our team is, you know, we have a, a certified records manager too, but doing a lot more coming over here because in the past, you know, a lot of, and, you know, sewage and water board and other departments haven't necessarily given their right. stuff yeah. over. So we're finding all sorts of treasures that they should be preserved over there, and not you know potentially lost somewhere else. So I'm excited about that relationship, and I appreciate you being part of it. No, and that's great for us because you know we have hundreds and hundreds of boxes of files <laughs> that you know, we are glad to unload. So and I know they're nasty people. Yeah. Oh, they're great. Right? Yeah. <laughs> when do you want the resubmission? I'll give you five.
and kind of come in for executive because that's the money in my hand. Perhaps the board would approve <coughs> if I make the dictator or editorial of the Civic Online Commission to deny Mr. Mulberry a job and to serve the people. My my concern has been how much of our funding actually is going to come in from the revenue and not in, not the continued prevalence we have, but can we what we have to do is better. You know, when I thought the library was in here, they want to make a feature and they say no because there's not enough of public interest in it. So well, again, I appreciate and understand the necessity of doing some of the things, but also we do have a funding element um, that can be invested into the library work. So I just hope we can keep our eye on that. Um, the other thing I want to say is, is to keep in mind when I look on the library website and see what's closed every day, what is mentioned are facilities that are closed until they're complete. And what isn't mentioned is how many are closed just on the second floor, you know, or when I just want to check in when they have the closure of um, the computer, you know, that day. So when I see people coming in the library who are trying to apply for jobs and cannot get turned away, mm -hmm. you know, I get very worried about that thing. And so whatever it is that we need to do you know, to get these buildings online, and not just me, and not just on these, my, my job is all of us, and what needs to be done. So I want to encourage you to go, the people we need to talk to, or when we get an acquisition of the public to start from their end, that needs to go to city council and other mayor, correct? Do you say yes to that? I mean, in other words, when I get a note from a member of the public who says, I just want to let you know how who do I give that to first? Do they go to the library? Do they go to the mayor? Do they go to city council? Who is the, I don't want to send a rash of emails to everybody because that's not effective, but I want to make sure we're sharing what we're hearing from the public in an effective manner. So what would that be? Well, I would suggest then that, that you compile them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once again, it gives, it gives you an opportunity to say, hey, I've got a thousand emails, you know, uh, and, and I'm not going to tell you how to do that, right. but that's my suggestion, uh, you know, keep a record of it. Uh, and, and I would say track when the second floor or the third floor is yeah. mm -hmm. got to be, and if that, unless you're collecting that information, yeah. mm -hmm. to your point, it's incomplete, it's not yeah. there, right? So unless yeah. it's tracked, it, it, it starts there. It starts with the mm -hmm. tracking. And that, that's a, that supports your request. If you guys mm -hmm. have uh, information on how much you are spending on maintenance, mm -hmm. that is helpful as well. Mm -hmm. And again, you supporting your position. And, uh, you know, once again, just regarding uh, the library crunching the money to get the HVAC design moved, you know, once again, that's. You're fronting the money yeah, with the intention yeah. of, you know, you know that money was moved from uh, the specific line item that would have taken care of this. So you're making it that it's so critical that you are fronting this money with the expectation that it's going to be replenished once you get the money that was targeted for this that had to be reprogrammed. But and, and even with that, it's also if you are, you know, if the library is putting money in with no expectation of reimbursement, um, you know, you've got to weigh that out. Document so you're that as well, because yeah, we are printing money yes. to keep our doors open okay, all the time. Well, that's, but. you know, that's, yeah. that's, uh, part, of, that's your that story. Line, that's part of your story. Thank you. Thank you. Any supplementary information or materials you'd like to submit to us, please combine everything yeah. that Patrick said and submit that. Yeah, we go to council. Yeah. 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 This is the opportunity. Exactly. Thank you. Can I get back to you, Dorothy? Or? Yeah, okay. You send it. Um, actually, when you guys resubmit, you can kind of blast me in. Larry gets it, I get it, Ellen will get it. So send it to Ellen, send it to Larry, send it to me. You know that. Build in the redundancy. Yeah. It doesn't get lost. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And did you know since the appointed site, you say it's presented to the council. So would we have to talk to the, the 
Is that the council budget? will have the council is going to have budget here. Public oh, budget. Here. Public budget here. Yeah. 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 All of the departments are going to have to go to the council. Yeah. You're going to have to look, uh, present your operating budget and yeah. your operating budget, and that's the perfect time to talk about the capital budget request as well. Because once again, I can't. You know, I'm responsible for presenting the capital budget, but I can't. You know, I, I can't carry everybody's work. I can, you know, I can know maybe trends or things that we're seeing as we are going to be doing, but we can't, we can't, we, we can't come with the true understanding and maybe even the passion yeah, that you guys have. Right. They haven't issued the date yet, so we'll, yeah. yeah. Um, right, that's that. I mean, we've talked this all these last times, so they should be ready for us to talk about it now. Yeah. And Larry, maybe, you know, as we're having this conversation, I think maybe it would be good for us when we are done with the hearing, maybe just to blast, do a blast, just like we did a blast with the, you know, with the schedule and everything else, just letting everybody know, okay, we're done with the hearing, and you know, kind of like we issued the schedule. Yeah. This is what's happening going forward. Yeah. So it's like a milestone point. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll make sure that that's true. All right. Thank you so much.